Hello everyone, this is the Doctor. Welcome back to Let's Play Star Trek Online. Today I've got another ship to show you. This is the uh, Solene Federation Dyson Science Destroyer I'm going to show you today. In typical format, this very first video will be an introduction of the ship. I'll talk about the stats, we'll read the stats, uh, we'll look at my build, we will look at my ship, and then we will take it into some PvE action and see what it can do. Before I start, Welcome to 1440p. All of my Star Trek Online videos from now on will be recorded at 1440p. So for those that have that ability uh, to uh, watch on larger displays, uh, this will look even better. And those for smaller displays, if you can pull the bandwidth, this will also look really good uh, because I am recording at a higher resolution. Also, uh, I am also playing on a brand new computer, totally upgraded, every bit of it. Hopefully this uh, videos will be smooth for you and uh, because it's a new computer the volume levels are all a little different so let me know how the uh, microphone volume goes, the game volume, the effects volume, the music volume, the dialogue volume, all of that. Let me know if I, I will adjust it if it needs to be adjusted. Alright, so in the past I have already shown you the Romulan Solene Dyson science destroyer and I gave you my opinions on that. I think that ship looked good and I think on the Romulan it was probably one of the better science ships on the Romulan side because the Romulans lack other science ships. Now on the Federation side it's very different because there are a lot of good science ships on the Federation side so introducing another science ship, it needs to be really good. And I don't think Cryptic has done a good job or given us a really good ship with the Solene Dyson Science Destroyer because there are just, uh, there's a lot of competition, I guess you could say, on the Federation side as far as science ships go. And this one doesn't compete very well, in my opinion. Now everybody's going to have their own opinion, and I told you that you can probably expect this video to be a little negative toward it and I, and I am a little negative toward it especially on the fed side because there's better science ships I'm mean, just gonna be honest that's my opinion but there are better science ships for the Federation side this is not one of them so anyway let's go over what it is I already read you the entire description on the Romulan videos of what the Dyson Science Destroyers are and what it's based off of. But here's the stats for the Federation version. This is the Solene class Dyson Science Destroyer. That's what they call it. The Solene class. This is from the anniversary uh, uh, version. The, uh, the free anniversary version that you could get by doing the Cumendations. So this is the fourth anniversary event version of the ship. This is not the Sea Store version. However, you have to have the anniversary version in order to get the secondary deflector dish and the uh, uber warp core. So in a way, it's almost the better ship. All right, so the hull strength is 28,500, which is not very high, but it does have a shield modifier of 1.3, and that allows the shield capacity to be a bit higher. Crew is 400, 3, 4, and 3 aft. That's normal for a science ship, but no beef with that. However, it does have a Solene dual heavy proton cannon in tactical mode, which is the fourth uh, position for the forward weapon slot. However, you cannot remove that weapon. It's fused to the ship. Three device slots. It's got one ensign tactical, one lieutenant commander tactical, one lieutenant engineering, one lieutenant science, one commander science, which is important because it's a science ship. You need to have commander science. Three tactical slots, two engineering, and four science. So uh, that's all right. That's about normal. See, there's nothing special there. That's my that's my one of my beefs with this ship. It's just normal. It's just like any other science ship. There's nothing real special as far as the bridge layout, bridge uh, officer layout, or the console layout. All right, base turn rate of 12 degrees per second, so it mo it turns pretty good. Um, an impulse modifier of 0.16. It's got plus 15 to auxiliary subsystems, which you need for a science ship. It can equip dual cannons or dual heavy cannons. Uh, so you can use cannons on this, but I'm not, and I'll explain in a little bit. Um, subsystem targeting, sensor analysis, a secondary deflector slot, 
Sol and A secondary deflector, Sol and A overcharge warp core, and the tactical mode. And we're not going to go into the whole thing about the tactical mode because you already saw it on the Romulan ship, but it's pretty much the same thing. Operates the same. We can go to the ship editor and just to show you, customize Starship, what editing options you have. Here's what it looks like. Um, there's only one template, that's the Sol and A class. Uh, the interior, you only got one um, custom interior, and that's the Dyson bridge that it comes with. You only have one window type, and as for the material, um, these other ones, you can only enable these if you buy the C-Store versions, because these are attached to the C-Store. So if I ch click Helios, see it's going to have me spend 2500 Zen. So you only have one material choice as well for the free one. Uh, as for the style, you can't mix it up either unless you own the C-Store versions. Uh, but you can apply a pattern to it. So really, if you have the free anniversary version, there is not much customization you can do. Now, as for the build, I'm going to bring up my build menu now. Remember that I, I build these based on a theme, trying to keep the same technologies, trying to use all the set bonuses that make sense to that alien species or that specific ship uh, and the energy type that that ship is built for. And uh, my build is not perfect, nor uh, do I ever claim it is, and I'm sure other people have many, many, many better ideas on how you can build a build for this ship and make it better. So this is what I've got. Or there you go. <laughs> That's it. Pretty much it's the same build as I had on the Romulan one. I have um, the, um, I went with the Protonic Polaron energy weapon type to uh, go with the um, proton cannons that the ship in natively has, which you can't remove, remember. So since they're proton, I needed proton weaponry to get the best out of it. So I went with that protonic Polaron from the Dyson Reputation store, and that costs dilithium for each of those. But I have the uh, dual protonic Polaron beam bank up front, and before I had a single uh, beam right here. But I switched that. I decided to put a dual beam bank on there for a little more punch, a little more DPS. Because it's a science ship anyway. It's going to do low DPS. So I, it needs all the help it can get. The ship turns fast enough that this uh, dual beam bank is useful. It's got a 90 degree targeting arc, which is wider than cannons. Cannons are 45. So this ship turns fast enough for me to be able to use the uh, dual beam bank. I've also got the experimental proton weapon from the Dyson uh, reputation again uh, using that three-piece set called the protonic arsenal and that's part of it and then the other part is the gravimetric photon torpedo that goes along with it so I got that as well and then of course the dual heavy proton cannon is part of the tactical mode which is fused to the ship in the rear I got two beams protonic polarons and then my kinetic cutting beam and uh, the other piece of the puzzle is the um, Universal Proton Particle Stabilizer, which enables the full Protonic Arsenal set. And the uh, bonuses for that set is that you get Arsenal Synergy, which is better photon projectile weapon damage, uh, a 3% critical chance, and it enables the use of fire at will with the experimental proton weapons. Um, the set 3 bonus, because I have all set 3, is a, pl a plus 10% critical chance with photon projectile weapons and a plus 10% critical severity, and it enables the use of rapid fire with the experimental proton weapon. So uh, the experimental proton weapon will use fire at will and um, cannon rapid fire, so it's a dual purpose kind of thing, and I like that, it's really cool. Uh, in addition, I have the complete Solene set, Solene deflector. Solene Impulse and Solene Shield. That's going to allow me to use Metaphasic Shields, which I love. And uh, the, of course, Solene Overcharge Warp Core that comes with the ship. Uh, all that together gives me that four piece bonus, which is the Metaphasic Shields. The Secondary Deflector, it's part of the ship, but I really don't find much use to it, but there it is. Um, 
the consoles, I've got my EPS, and then I've got my Neutronium with whole HP. I got two um, field generators for extra shield capacity and my universal simulated module. Now, I could change that out, you know, do a little less with the shield capacity and put in, for example, um, actual science consoles that increase like exotic damage because I use gravity well and all that. I could actually use some beneficial <laughs> science console there, you know, if I wanted to. But I, I decided to put these in just for this, you know, these runs. I, I love running those anyway. And uh, I like having a really high shield capacity. And science ships have some of the highest shield capacity because their shield modifiers are the highest. So I like that. For the tactical consoles, of course, I had to use the Dyson Reputation Store consoles. And the reason why is because they do the proton weapon damage plus the Polaron weapon damage on the weapons I'm using. So it's, it's a dually. It gives both. It, it buffs my protons and it buffs my Polarons. Now, not as much as a Fleet Spire console would. A Fleet Spire console would uh, buff that a whole lot more and give like critical severity or critical chance. Uh, these don't do that, however they do give accuracy, so there's something anyway. And then for the final one, I did just what I did on the other one, I got one that also increased my photon weapon, or pro, I mean, yeah, photon projectile weapon damage, so that I would do better damage with my um, photon projectiles, or my torpedoes. So um, that's what I put on there. That's pretty much the build. Um, it's very similar to the Romulan one, except I'm using beams instead of cannons. Now I could use cannons, the turn rate's fast enough, but I wanted to do something a little different and I like beams on this ship more than I like the cannons. So I kind of got a hybrid, I, in, in a sense I have a hybrid beam cannon setup because in tactical mode I have the cannon ability of the dual heavy proton cannons. So I've got cannon rapid fire 3 for that in tactical mode. So I can fire beams and I can fire cannons at the same time. So it's actually not terrible. As for the stations, uh, like I said, I got cannon rapid fire 3 for tactical mode. Torpedo high yield 3, I love that. Beam fire at will 2, and I was contemplating changing this to beam overload. So I could do that. Uh, I'll keep it for fire at will for these videos, but just you know, keep in your head that you could change this to beam overload and have a different ability there. Tac Team 1, uh, for some reason I have two Tac Teams. You know what, I need to change that. I've been f forgetting to do that. Engineering Team 2, Emergency Power to Weapons 1, uh, Transfer Shield Strength 1, Science Team 2, Tycan Drift 2, and then Gravity Well 3 in Science Mode, Polarize Hull 2, and Hazard Emitters. And I think I want to change that. I don't know why I have two tech teams. I didn't do that on purpose. I think I just forgot to train that character. I have no idea where I'm going right now. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Let's look at uh, tactical... Base. Ensign power, let's see, what can we do? I guess I could put beam overload one so I can have it too. Or though or I could put torpedo spread. Hmm, do I want another beam ability or do I want a torpedo ability there? See, I don't know. I think I'll put, I think Torpedo Spread might be more beneficial. Let's do that for right now. Torpedo Spread 1 on the green. And let's kill my people up. Okay, Torpedo Spread 1. Good, I think the others are skilled already. Let's go to space. So 
here's the ship in space. This was a problem I had. I'm running out of room. What can I sacrifice? I don't want to sacrifice any of my buttons. Oh, do I have them all on there? Maybe I don't have to sacrifice them. Let me just go through these real quick. That battery capacitor. Oh, yeah, that's for the auxiliary power. Right? It's useful, yeah. Yeah, that's there. Cannon rapid fire 3 is there, yes. Polarize, yeah, you're there, you're there. You are there, you are there, you are there, you are there, you are there. You are there. You are there. Subspace fold, I think I have you on another bar. Tactical mode, okay, tat team one. I don't have the auxiliary or target auxiliary target engines. I don't have that stuff. I've got high yield, yeah. I guess I've got it all on there. Okay, let's do that. Alright, so here's my ship. My auxiliary power, as you can see, is very high because I'm throwing out, uh, you know, all those sciency powers. I like having that high. Shields are all right, 121 uh, weapons, but click that, and then I got 125. My stats: 43,000 gold, not terrible. 15,000 shields. The shields. Let me get away from everyone, because that's loud and noisy. Everyone's doing their powers, warping away and everything. It's so loud. My shield capacity is not as high as I would like it, but that's because of the use of the Solene shield, which is not the highest shield capacity. The adapted Mako would have a much higher shield capacity. But... Like 3,000 more on top of that. But um, I have to use it so I get all the bonuses there. When we go to impulse, my turn rate is 16.3 degrees per second, so it's pretty, pretty quick. Not bad. Like that. That's my turn rate. It's fast enough to get around to fire my... Um, my dual beam because remember it's a 90 degree targeting arc so that's wider than cannons so it works out all right it's fast enough maybe a little bit slow for cannons to be honest with you of course I can do evasive maneuvers and definitely turn around quick enough now the one thing I don't like about this ship is the look of it I think it's the most ridiculous looking ship maybe in the game. <laughs> it's just stupid. I have no other word for it except the design is stupid. I like the detail on the hull, mind you. I love the hull. I love the plating. I love the coloring. What I don't like is the shape. It is a stupid shape. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. These The, the nacelles are just in the wrong place for me. It looks stupid. I think it would look way better if the nacelles came out and were up, not not down here on the bottom, you know, in line with the bottom of the ship, but like above all of this, the classic Federation starship design with the nacelles over the saucer and over the hole up here, over all of this that would totally transform the look of it and make it completely fixed in my opinion but as it's shaped now it's stupid and as you fly it it feels weird it feels it feels like you're pointing the front end at something and it's just I don't know it just doesn't feel good when you're flying it I don't know any other way to say it or put it it doesn't feel good when you're flying it. 
So I think this is one of the ugliest ships. And it's so ugly in my opinion. I definitely will never, ever, ever, ever have this ship as my main ship on my main character, Science. I will never fly it. There are better science ships, remember. There's, I, I'll go through all of them, all of them with you if you'd like, because there, there are way better science ships on the Fed side. Shoot, let's do it right now. If you go to, uh, I need to go back to ESD so we can go to the store, but even in the C store, for example, the Federation ships, um, you have, for science, you've got the Advanced Research Vessel, the Nebula, as it's called. And in fact, go to the retrofit is even better. The retrofit, retrofit advanced research vessel or nebula class, um, which I do have purchased, it looks phenomenal. It's a little weird, oh, granted, because the nacelles are down here and it's got this little ski thing on top. But it's not as stupid looking as the Dyson ship. At least it's got a big old nice saucer that looks like the Enterprise D. But this has some really good abilities on it. Uh, for example, it's got Commander Science, so it's a complete science ship. It's got the three aft and three forward weapon slots, same as the Dyson ship. It's got a higher crew, more crew. It's got a higher hull strength, 38,000, I mean 31,500 versus 28,000. So it's got more hull right off the bat. Um, nine degrees per second, it's slower turning, but it's beefier. It's still got the plus 15 to auxiliary. It's got a tachyon detection grid, system tar uh, targeting and sensor analysis. So there's an option right there. That's good. Then we've got, we got more options. We've got the, of course, the uh, Voyager, or uh, you've got the actual Intrepid class, which you can get, or you've got the uh, Sea Store version of the B uh, Bellerophon class, which I also have as well. I love this ship, and it looks cool. It looks good flying, and it has, 3-4, three, 3-aft. Three it's got uh, Commander Science. Uh, three. Uh, this one has more engineering than the Dyson one. This one has three engineering. 12 degrees per second. It's got, that, it's got, a, it's got a high turn rate too. A little less hole at 22,000. Um, but it really it moves fast and it's really it's a good ship. It's a good science ship. Nadion detonator module. What else do we have? We have the... Um, Oh yeah, you got the Vestas. You've got the uh, Science of Vesta. This ship is probably one of the best science ships in the game right here. This one has 27,900 hull, 1.35 shield modifier. That's even higher than the shield modifier I have now. 3-4, three, 3 afts, um, 5 science console slots. 5! Um, turn rate of 12 degrees per second, so it turns just as good as the Dyson ship. Uh, Universal Lieutenant Commander and Ensign Bridge Officer Stations. It's got a binus, binus, bonus science console slot. Sensor analysis, substance, can it can equip cannons too. You can put cannons on this. It's got an auxiliary phaser dual heavy cannon. It's got a hangar bay with a wing of Danube runabouts. Come on, a hangar bay. Already better than the Dyson ship. And it's got a universal sympathetic fermion transceiver, which does all kinds of sciencey things. And if you buy all three of these ships, you can put all three of the consoles on this ship and have an even better experience with the combined thing. So this right here, the Vesta science ship, probably one of the better ones in, in science ship on the Federation side as well. There's even another one. Of course, you also have, again, you have the Intrepid. This Intrepid comes with um, the ablative generator. So you have, not only do you have a science ship, but you have that ablative armor that you can enable. So that's unique. So there's another option. Now we come to the Odysseys, three Odysseys. One of them's a science ship. You've got a science Odyssey class. The science Odyssey, it's even better. Four forward and four aft weapon slots. As science ship goes, this has the most weaponry capable firing at one time. Four forward and four aft. It beats the Dyson ship even in tactical mode. Four device slots. It's got, of course, um, one, uh, let's see, 
one lieutenant tactical, one commander engineering, one lieutenant science, one engineer, so one lieutenant commander universal. So it doesn't have a commander science station, but it does have a universal lieutenant commander where you can assign a science officer. But look at the hull on this thing, 42,000. Uh, turn rate is slow, but it does have plus 10 power to shields on and auxiliary, uh, advanced quantum slipstream sensor analysis and worker bees. And it's got command abilities, strategic maneuvering, shield frequency modulation, weapon system efficiency, and attract fire. And again, if you add all three consoles from all three things here, you can combine that into um, uh, even more abilities on a Sonda science ship. The only thing it lacks is the commander science station. But other than that, it's, this is probably the most tankiest science ship. Um, see how the nacelles are higher here? Um, this is if the di if, if this is all the, that the Dyson ship needs to change is put the nacelles above like this, and it would totally change the look of the ship and make it better. So those are oh 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 you've got a Vulcan Dakir ship as well. This is a science ship, three four three aft, um, one commander science station. Three engineering, two tactical, four science, 10 degrees per second, 30,000 hull, uh, power to auxiliary. It's got the Tequila support craft, subsystem targeting sensor analysis. The support craft, there, it has its own stats, which does a lot of cool stuff. So there's another science ship on the Federation side, okay? I mean, holy crap. There's just so many science options on the Federation side that this little ship here has to go up against a lot. It's got a lot of competition and it does not compete. No sir. No sir. Let's go out and do some PVEs in it. I do like the subspace, subspace fold, it's pretty, pretty cool. It just looks so dumb. I mean, it looks very off balance, it looks very, it's got a small head on a big body, you know what I mean, I'm, what I'm trying to say? It just looks dumb. Do my normal thing here. Jolan True, thank you. Security, we have need. Yeah. Hm. So I will attempt to use the powers. Um, I'll start off by using my gravity well in science mode, then I'll switch to tactical mode and show you the combination of beams and cannons, and that's really about the only special features it has. I can't cloak, unlike the Romulan one, so, you know, the Romulan one still has the advantage on being able to cloak.
you can see, it's not too terrible on the damage. But it has the same flaw that I had with the Romulan one. You've got to choose, do you want to use your Commander Science power, or do you want to use your Commander Tactical power, and when to use them. Because you can only use one at a time, you can't use them together. And that's the rub right there. As for the special abilities, it really only has, for example, Metaphasic Shields. That's one of the special four set abilities when you put all the Solanay things together. So that's cool. I love the Metaphasic Shield. Uh, I do like that. But the only other special ability really it has is to switch to that tactical mode and have those Proton Cannons. Which really, you could get with any other cannon on any other ship. So, um, non-proton, you could go with another energy type and boost them even more using fleet spire consoles, which are a whole lot better than the Dyson store tactical consoles. That, again, is the other beef with it. And my third beef is, it just looks terrible. At least the Federation one. At least on the Romulan side, I had a cloak, a battle cloak, which came in handy. No cloak here. So it's a bit even less useful than the Romulan one because I've got no battle cloak. I also have no singularity abilities like the Romulan side has. So I'm losing a lot more with the Federation. Remember my three issues with the ship. Um, the proton cannon being kind of locked into proton weaponry. And, uh, and if you don't, you're not getting the full benefits because mixing energy types is not good. You can't remove the proton weapon. Um, of course, you could just ignore the tactical ability altogether, but then 
you are ignoring a big part of why the ship exists. Um, the, uh, the looks of it is terrible. And, uh, there was something else too. Can't buff the, uh, you can't buff the weapon damage right with these consoles. Maybe in the future they'll have good consoles for Proton, but right now it's just not ready for it. Um, so anyway, that is my look at the ship. And, uh, well, my introduction, of course. I'm going to take it through the Borg STFs and the Voth. So we can give a proper look at it. And, uh, of course, you can give me your opinions and what you think of it. But I am a little bit harsh on it. And that's because there's a lot of competition on the Fed side. Oh, I haven't even mentioned all the others. There are more ships. There's the Tholian Recluse. I mean, not the Recluse, the Orb Weaver. I have the Orb Weaver on this character. There's the Orb Weaver. That's a really good science ship. Uh, there's the things you can get, of course, in the in the, in the uh, regular ship store that are not sea store items. We'll just go through them real quick so that you can see what's there. But just so you know, you know, there's there's a lot there's a lot more science options on the Federation side than probably any other faction, especially the Romulan side. That's for sure. But, uh, oh yeah, you lose those other things on, this, on the Fed ship. You lose, you don't have the singularity abilities that the Romulan side has. So that's like four or five abilities right there. You don't have on this ship. You don't have a cloak or a battle cloak. The Romulan one does and the Klingon as well. So they have a benefit right there. But if you go to the store, you know, if you go to... Um, science vessels if you look at first um, rear admiral lower half you've got the reconnaissance science vessel the deep space science vessel and then you got this the z store one the advanced research vessel the vulcan one the, uh, apparently an obelisk oh i've got others on that's why huh it's like an obelisk is not a science vessel so there you go you've got the reconnaissance science and the deep space science as well those are options commander uh, console stations and bridge officer stations. So those are two ships right there. And of course you can get fleet versions as well of these. See, that's another thing. There's upgraded versions of these in the fleet versions. So um, in fleet you've got the fleet deep space science vessel. The fleet research science vessel retrofit. The fleet reconnaissance science vessel. The fleet advanced research science vessel. The fleet science vessel retrofit. The fleet long range science vessel retrofit. Just a ton of science ships. Go to Vice Admiral. And you've got the Z-Store ones, or C-Store ones, I've already shown you. These are all the C-Store ones. And then fleet versions, of course, is those, of those. So, I mean, just a total amount of science ships on um, the Federation side. It's ridiculous. That's why the Dyson has a lot to go up against. I also have, uh, not the Obelisk, Orb Weaver. Orb Weaver is a great ship. And I'm, I'm, I'm currently working on, and will eventually build it, but a whole new Kara uh, Tholian build. All Nukara weapons, Tetrion weapon based, all Nukara consoles, Nukara um, console set, you know, get all the bonuses from the Nukara set on that, on an Orb Weaver. One day I'll have that and I'll show you. But the um, Orb Weaver, it's a great science ship. Oh yes, duh, duh. Before I flew this ship, I was flying the Wells because I love the Wells. It's, it's also a great science ship, a time ship. Makes sense with the Doctor anyway. But it's got great time ability, temporal disruption device, chroniton dual beams, um, it's anti-proton, it's got tachyonetic converter, uh, Mannheim device, the uh, Tipler cylinder. Uh, this is a great ship. I have, I love the Wells. Um, so, I mean, just, there's, you, there's just a tremendous amount of science ships on the Fed side to choose from. The Dyson has a hard time slipping in there and trying to compete, and it's not enough. Cryptic, it's not enough. I'm sorry, guys. It's not enough. It doesn't compete well, and it looks like a turd flying through space. So it's not appealing at all. And that's my review of the... Um, Federation, Dyson, Science Destroyer, Solon A class. I hope you enjoyed that or got something out of it. Of course, I'm going to do the Borg and Voss stuff. I'm going to take it through its whole run, and then I'll summarize again at the end of the Voth video. So, there you go. Leave your comments and let me know what you think.
Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next. Wait, 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 wait. Before I go, one more ship that I was looking through here that I found that I absolutely love. Probably, like I said, like my second best favorite science ship. Of course, I did a video on this, and I can't believe I just forgot it. The Voth Palisade science vessel. Oh my gosh. As far as a science vessel goes on the Federation side, it's beefy, it's tanky, it's powerful. I love the Voth Palisade. So there's the Wells, the Palisade, the Orb Weaver, the fleet science version ships that you can get at um, Rear Admiral Lower Half, um, the Vulcan ship, the uh, Sea Store ships, the Vesta, the Odyssey, just a myriad of science ships. Have I made my point yet? I hope I have. Stay tuned for the next.